This lecture is on parallel circuits and um, current divider equation. We're going to show uh, the derivation of, of something called current divider equation, which is an equation you can use to find current through parallel resistors. So first of all, here's a diagram of a parallel circuit. And the reason why this is a parallel circuit is because there's multiple paths for current to flow for the source. Uh, remember, a series circuit, which we discussed in the previous lecture, there's a single path for current to flow. Parallel circuit, there's multiple paths. So see here, uh, for this source we have over at the left, uh, the current can flow through three different paths um, to get back to the other side. Now also, um, in a parallel circuit, the voltage across parallel elements are the same. So all three resistors, as well as this current source, have the same voltage V. And that can be reasoned a couple of different ways. Uh, one way to reason is if you do a KVL around any of these loops containing the source and a resistor, well, it would have to be that the voltage across the source would have to equal the voltage across the resistor in order for the voltages around that loop to sum to zero. I mean, there's no other place where uh, the voltages would have to balance out. Um, another uh, way to reason is that remember that our nodes here are connected with shorts, and shorts have zero volts across them. So as we go from one end of this node to the other end, both top and bottom, uh, on each side of our parallel elements, well, no voltage is lost. So voltage is the same across parallel elements, whether they're resistors or anything else. And it's current that splits up, so it's current that divides. So you see, this is just the opposite of a series circuit. Um, as we discussed earlier, series circuits have the same current, but it's the voltage that splits up or divides. Okay? So we're going to come up with an equation that you can use to find uh, current through parallel resistors. And this derivation starts off with KCL, as you see here, um, current in I equaling these three currents flowing out. And then using Ohm's law for the current through the resistors V over R. Okay, so I1, the current through R1 is just V divided by R1. I2 is V divided by R2. And I3 is V divided by R3. And then factoring out the voltage, since it's the same voltage, we can see the following that the equivalent resistance of a parallel uh, of parallel resistors is equal to what you see here 1 over REQ equaling the sum of reciprocals of those individual resistor values now if you take REQ over to this side of the equal sign and take this sum of reciprocals over to the other side um, you get one of my favorite things to say and that's REQ of parallel resistors equals the sum of reciprocals reciprocated. Okay, so REQ of parallel resistors is the sum of reciprocals reciprocated. Uh, remember, the REQ for series resistors is just you add up the sums, as we talked about before. So now, continuing on uh, with the derivation here, uh, you can write that the current uh, I is equal to the voltage divided by the REQ of the parallel resistors, and then V would just be I times that REQ. And now if you substitute in V for Ohm's law for each resistor current, so IR equals V over R, but now we just substitute in that V is I times REQ, well, you get these equations that are called current divider equation. That the current through uh, R1, which is I1 in this diagram, is equal to the current flowing into the parallel combination I times a ratio of resistances where REQ is in the numerator and the value of the resistor that we want the current for is in the denominator. So this is uh, just the opposite of the voltage divider case, right? Because for the ratio uh, in voltage divider equation, uh, the REQ is in the denominator and the resistor value we wanted the voltage for was in the numerator. So here the ratio, it, it's just... Um, and also the REQ, the way we get REQ is different. 
Um, so as you can see, I2, the current through R2, is just the current flowing into the parallel combination times REQ over R2, and here's uh, the expression for I3. So now we're going to take um, and put this to practice. Okay, so let's uh, look at this circuit again that has some numbers. And first, um, we'll solve this without current divider equation, and then we'll come back and do a current divider equation to make sure we get the same uh, answer. So you see the REQ, okay, the REQ would just be uh, the sum of reciprocals, so we take a half plus a third plus a sixth. Okay, so you see it's the sum of reciprocals, and then that whole thing reciprocated. Okay, so that's what I mean by sum of reciprocals reciprocated. That's the REQ of parallel resistors. Okay, so if you go ahead now, it just so happens the numbers are easy in this uh, problem to do fractions. So a third is two sixths, a half is three sixths, so we got three sixths plus two sixths plus a six, so six over six. Uh, and the reciprocal of that, of course, is uh, one. Right, so it's just one over six over six, so one over one, which is one. So our REQ is just one ohm in this problem. And then we can find V. Okay. V, the voltage across these parallel elements, is just going to be the REQ of 1 ohm times I, so times 10 amps. So our V in this problem, 10 volts. Okay, so there's 10 volts across each of those uh, parallel resistors. Now, to find the current through each parallel resistor, well, we can use Ohm's law. That I for the 2 ohm is just going to be 10 volts divided by 2 ohms. Which is 5 amps. Then we have the current through the 3 ohm. That's 10 volts divided by 3 ohms. That's three and a third amps. Okay, and then I through the six ohm. Right, and I'm just going to write the answer. Right, it'd be ten divided by six, also, which is one and two thirds, which uh, we could also get from just KCL, right? Since we have 10 amps flowing into uh, a node, say this top node, there's 10 amps flowing into, um, well, these currents flowing out of the node through the resistors have to sum up to 10. So if we got 5 and 3 and a third here, it's got to be the balance, which is 1 and 2 thirds. Okay, but again, Ohm's law would just be 10 volts divided by 6 ohms. So those uh, are our currents. Now, also to be complete, let's uh, put in the direction of the currents. Um, Right, current leaves one end of a source, wants to get back to the other side. So since the current of the source is flowing into the top node, the current through these resistors would be flowing down. Right. And that agrees with the polarity that we were given for the voltage across uh, this parallel combination, right? Because the current flowing out of this source is flowing out of its higher voltage end, which is mean, means that it's supplying power. And then the current flowing into the higher voltage end of the resistors mean, means that the resistors are absorbing power, which is all they can do, as we talked about before. Okay, but now let's um, do current divider equation. find these currents. So using current divider equation, uh, the current for the 2 ohm would look like this. So current for the 2 ohm, the 10 amps is what's out in front of the equation. Then we got ratio of resistors. In the denominator goes the value of the resistor we want the current for. So that's where the 2 goes. 
in the numerator goes the REQ of the parallel resistors, which is 1. So you see, 10 times a half, 5 amps for the 2 ohm resistor, which is the same as what we got on the other page. And then uh, current for the 3 ohm. It's going to be 10 times 1 over 3. Okay, because REQ1, now we want the current through the 3 ohms. So 3 goes in the denominator. So that's 3 and a third. Okay, and then... The current for the 6 ohm is just going to be 10 times 1 over 6. Okay? Which is 1 and 2 thirds amps. Alright, so again, that just shows uh, current divider equation gets the same answers as we got through using. Uh, Ohm's law. And again, just like with voltage divider equation, current divider equation sometimes will save you time when you have more complex circuits. Now before we leave this, a few things. Uh, first of all, uh, current divider equation is only valid for parallel circuits. Okay, And you should understand the reason why you would never use current divider equation on a series circuit. And the reason for that, yes, you're right. <laughs> current is the same in a series circuit. It doesn't split up, so that's why it doesn't make sense to use current divider equation in a series circuit. Likewise, it doesn't make sense to use voltage divider equation on a parallel circuit, right? Because voltage is constant, the same across parallel elements. So those are cardinal sins of uh, circuit theory. If you ever use current divider equation on a series circuit, or attempt to, or if you attempt to use voltage divider equation on a parallel circuit. Those are things you definitely do not want to ever do. Now, one other thing before we leave this is, um, you know, we can see here that the smallest resistance had most of the current. See that the 2 ohm resistor had 5 ohms of the 10, the total of 10 amps, and the largest resistance had the smallest amount of current. And you see that's always true in a parallel circuit. Okay, that the smaller smallest resistance will always have most of the current. And again, you can see it mathematically, right, by the ratios, but also it's good to have a conceptual understanding. So if we come back over to the diagram and use our analogous quantities, well, Look, in a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same across those parallel resistors. Therefore, the pressure is the same. So doesn't it make sense that the path that has the least resistance, the least opposition, will have most of the flow? So you see, that's why the smallest resistor will have most of the current, because it has a constant pressure, just like the other parallel resistors do. But since its opposition is less than uh, the other larger resistors, well, it's going to get more current. Okay, now um, a couple other things. I There's a couple other things about parallel circuits that I want to cover, but I'll do that in um, the next couple of videos. One is, it turns out there's a different way that you can uh, obtain REQ besides some of reciprocals reciprocated. And there's also another form of current divider equation that I want to show you. But those, those topics are coming up in the next few videos.